y'all. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Little Ways, Little Things. I am so excited to be back in 2020. This is my first video for 2020. I hope your new year has been wonderful so far. I did take a short break after Christmas and I wanted to explain a little bit about why. I'm sure that you have been watching other YouTube videos where the creators have made statements about the COPPA laws and those new uh, regulations that went into effect. So I feel like I'm going to make a really short statement about that as well. If you wanna skip ahead to today's content, go ahead and skip ahead and I'll put that time down below. But in the meantime, I want to make it clear that children's safety is a number one priority and it is of utmost importance. Of course, I think we all agree with that. Um, with that being said, I think sometimes out of um, caution, we can over-regulate things. And before Christmas, it looked to me like there was going to be so much over-regulation that a lot of YouTube channels may have to shut down. Um, since then, the Federal Trade Commission has come forward and clarified just a few things, enough to where I think that we can keep moving on this channel and that's what I intend to do. I do intend on marking each one of my videos as made for kids or not made for kids. With that being said, this is a homemaking channel and we do fun crafts and we do recipes and DIYs and just things that will make your home feel a lot more cozy and happy. And the videos are for the most part not made for children, but of course there's no content within the videos that can't be watched by children. Um, I The reason I chose not to make a blanket statement about my channel as being um, not made for children. The reason I chose to go through and do each individual one is there were a few videos that I've made in the past that may have children in them or could be conceived as made for children. Um, some of my very favorite videos um, might have snacks in them that children would enjoy or um, decorations that children would be able to make. So because of that, I've decided to um, mark some of those past videos as made for children just to be safe. I certainly don't want any fines. No fines can be afforded on this channel. It is not a money-making channel for me. It is more like a ministry. It is something that I do to hopefully help you enhance your home. I know that when I was at home, um, all those years ago with a five-year-old and a newborn and no transportation. If I had had a YouTube channel to watch where I could be motivated by another stay-at-home mom cooking or seeing what snacks they did for their kids or what dinners they were making, I think it would have saved me a lot of anxiety and depression. So I just hope that the COPPA regulations do not affect um, the, the really good creativity that's coming across YouTube. So I'm gonna kind of give it up to God and keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna mark the videos as I make them, uh, as being made for children or not made for children, and just hope that, um, hope that everything comes out the way it's supposed to. With that being said, let's go ahead with what I wanted to um, start the new year off with. I, um, directly after Christmas, I never decorate immediately for Valentine's Day. I always do a little bit of winter first, so I'm gonna give you um, a quick um, DIY Dollar Tree lantern that I made for my dining room table that I wanted to be able to transition from winter into Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna show you how I made that and then I'll give you a few shots of the winter decorations around my house. It's not a whole home tour, just a few shots of here and there how we've transitioned from Christmas into winter and not quite Valentine's Day yet. So stick around and let's get started. You are going to need eight paint sticks and four pictures from Dollar Tree. I got these eight paint sticks, which you can see I've already started painting with white chalk paint, but I got them in a package from Home Depot for 98 cents. So they all came for 98 cents. And then I got four decorative um, type art or wall hangings from Dollar Tree, two of two different sizes, two large and then two a little bit smaller. 
These two I got right around Christmas time. So you see they say Merry Christmas on them. And the other one, this is the back that I've already started painting, but they're two eyelashes and it says dreaming. They're really cute, but I really thought they would be a good size to make my lantern out of. So the first thing that you wanna do is paint them. So I already kind of started painting the bigger one, but you can see there that that's how they're gonna kind of fit together. The eyelashes cut out are not ideal, but the Merry Christmas sign is going to cover them up. So I'm not too, too worried about that. And usually at Dollar Tree, you can find all kinds of other different kind of wall hanging. So just find four, two of each size that make you happy as far as the size goes. So you take all of the hardware off the back of all four pieces and actually um, one of them came where the hardware had already fallen off so it didn't even I didn't even need to do that. But that Mary was glitter and that would show through the paint so I knew I had to um, sand that off with a little sanding block. I sanded it off, got all the glitter off, and then I'm just basically painting it with some Waverly chalk paint. It's gonna take about two coats to cover the Merry and the Christmas. That color, by the way, is the color Elephant, and it's that Waverly chalk paint that you get from Walmart. It covers really, really well, so that's what I'm gonna do is finish painting all of the individual pieces with the gray elephant chalk paint. And by the magic of YouTube, you can see that I've got everything painted. I did leave a few little edges unpainted because they're going to be glued to something else and you won't be able to see them. So that's why some of the paint sticks don't have paint all the way to the end. And even if you flip over the little artwork, you'll see that one side of each one is not painted. And that's because that is going to be glued down to the bigger piece so you won't see it. So it's really easy to assemble it. You can see that the smaller piece goes inside the bigger piece. It's very easy. And like I said, your sizes and dimensions are gonna be based on what you can find at Dollar Tree as far as the size of your little art pieces. But the way you want to um, attach them is with E6000. Yes, you can use a glue gun, but I don't think it would be as sturdy or last as long. I do want this to last um, through to, to like the winter season and Valentine's Day. And maybe even if I like the way it comes out, maybe even longer. So I'm going to use the E6000 because I know that it's stronger. Now you can see that those little eyelashes, the decorative part of the picture, are they're going to be completely covered by both of the little Merry Christmas signs. So I'm not so worried about that. And I think it's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. And I'm just gonna concentrate on getting that to cover up those eyelashes. One thing is, I think it did keep my top and bottom from being perfectly centered. It was off a little bit just because I did have to make an adjustment to cover up those eyelashes, but it came out really, really nice. So I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm just showing you how the top and the bottom look in comparison to each other. The bottom tray is like they were, the two pieces of artwork were glued face down and then the top piece is going to be like the two little pieces of artwork are glued face up. So I'm using a pencil to mark exactly where I've placed that top little artwork because of the fact that um, it's got those eyelashes and I was kind of afraid that if I, when I had the glue on it, that I wouldn't be able to eyeball it just perfectly. So I um, did use like little pencil marks to mark where I needed to put those. Okay, it is kind of hard to squeeze out the E6000, but I got it all over the edges. And now I'm just carefully turning it over and lining the Merry Christmas sign up with those little pencil hash marks that I put on there a minute ago, just to make sure it's perfect. Then I'll probably put some books on it so that it can dry. And I do let both of the pieces dry before I assemble the rest of it. 
I'm also taking a little Q-tip and running it along the Merry Christmas sign base so that I can make sure that any extra glue that might have leaked out from underneath is picked up. So, like I said, I let that dry. Don't try to do this all at once. It just won't work. But I let that dry and then I took the paint sticks and I put them at an angle and I glued one on one corner of the bottom tray and one on the other so that they lined up like a 90 degree angle. The main idea or basically what I'm going to wind up doing is gluing both of the paint sticks to the bottom of the picture and making sure that they touch each other or butt right up next to each other in a 90 degree angle and then I'll eventually be gluing the top piece on the top two edges of the paint sticks. So basically um, you don't need to put the E6000 on the two paint sticks that are touching each other making the angle but I had a little trick that I used which is that I was going to actually put some hot glue on there so that while the E6000 is drying the pieces are held in place now I'm also using those little chip clips and that helps but I just you just need to make extra sure that they are going to stay straight up and they don't accidentally kind of lean to the side while they're drying because then the top won't fit on just right so when both of the tops are in place and everything's glued together, it will be perfectly steady and stable. But just for now, while I'm having the four sets of paint sticks on the bottom piece without the top piece, it needs some stability. So that's why I added the glue along the corners and then glued those together and then the E6000 on the bottom and then it will eventually go on the top as well. I hope that makes sense, but I think you can see. Let me speed it up and finish assembling it so that you can see how it all goes together. I tell you just how beautiful you look tonight As if you haven't heard me say it about a hundred times You shake your head and look away Once all the paint sticks are in place and are drying, I am going to take a little Q-tip and kind of clean up any of the glue that has squeezed out from between the edges. I'm also going to run a thin line of hot glue along ins the inside of each of the 90 degree angle, the pairs of the paint sticks. Then I'm going to put E6000 on the top frame and pop that on and it will fit perfectly after it dries it will be nice and sturdy so now i decided to go over the piece with some waverly chalk paint in white because i wanted to give the effect like it had been painted and sitting outside for a long time and the paint was peeling off kind of a really rustic look but I did have a problem with a little bit of a gap between the paint sticks where they came together. They didn't sit just perfectly and there was a gap. So I took some Dollar Tree spackling and I just took my finger and I ran it where, over wherever there was a gap. So wherever the two paint sticks came together and it left that ugly gap, I just took my finger and ran it right down the middle of the gap to kind of cover it up and it dried and it worked perfectly. I couldn't believe how well it covered up that little, kind of that little weird space between the two paint sticks. It worked really good. So I would recommend doing that and letting that dry. And then all I did was take a little bit more of the same gray paint that I had painted the base with and I dry brushed it all over the lantern because I just, like I said, I just wanted it to look like it had been sitting outside on someone's porch and years later we just brought it in. So I think it worked out really good. You can use any painting technique you like and any color. The whole point is get it to fit with your decor and what you like. I want to make two bows to decorate my lantern. One of them I want to make with a wintry theme and one of them with a Valentine's Day theme. 
I also want the bow to be one of those messy cross bows. I don't want it to be formal and big poofy loops. I want it to be, like I said, I'm staying with the rustic theme. And so I'm using all these beautiful gray and black colors to make a wintry type bow. And after I get it tied into the cross I'm just gonna fluff it out the way I want and then I'm gonna do the same thing with different um, pieces of ribbon and fiber for the Valentine's bow make sure when you're making these type of bows that are these messy kind of raggy bows that you use different kinds of ribbon out of your stash and a lot of different textures um, some of the ribbon that I used even came from Dollar Tree some of it came off of packages that I received this Christmas it's a really fun way to use up your scraps so make sure you do that I'm gonna finish the bow off by spreading the ribbon around and then cutting each of the ends at a diagonal so that it looks more finished. Then I'm going to thread two buttons to a piece of jute and tie it around the center of the bow. I love the way this bow came out. It's so cute and I love that it's made from scraps. Well, here is the lantern finished on top of my dining room table. To finish it off, I wrapped some jute around the top level of the top of the lantern. And then I just stuck some um, lamb's ear into the jute twine. And I got the lamb's ear from Walmart. And there is my little rag ribbon bow. I think it came out so nice. I have some just some different bows with different textures kind of hanging out. And my favorite is the little bow, the gray ribbon with the deer on it, and also the wired ribbon on the bottom that looks like birch. I just really think it came out nice, and it looks really, really cute for winter. I cannot believe that I got all of the material for this lantern for about $6. It was $0.98 cents for the paint sticks from Home Depot. $4 for the little artwork from Dollar Tree and maybe a dollar worth of paint and ribbon because that came from my stash. So here is a shot of the Valentine's ribbon and how I've kind of changed the lantern for Valentine's Day so I can keep it on my dining room table for pretty much all of January and February. And I'm also going to add these little, um, there are like carnations and roses from Dollar Tree on the bottom. Be super careful with the candle being an open flame there if you do put something around the bottom. You can see on that top layer where I've wrapped some jute around. That's what I was talking about when I had the winter lantern showing. And I was saying that I tucked some lamb's ear and tied the bow around the jute. That's the jute that I'm talking about. It really finished off the lamp well. I'm going to give you some shots of how I decorated the rest of my house for winter, just transitioning it over from Christmas. Just very simple. I left some of the Christmas greenery out, um, especially if it didn't have a lot of glitter or ornaments. The mantle looks nice with the birch candlesticks there and the little sparkly squirrel. And that garland came from Target. It is really pretty. It's from their Hearth and Hand collection from last year and I use it in the fall and in the winter. And I just think everything looks very pulled together and sort of festive and it's it's just re a real clean look for winter. I also have a cute little garland of um, little gray mittens hanging off the fireplace that came from the Target dollar spot last year. Here's some more shots of my end tables Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this video encourages you to try a Dollar Tree lantern or gives you some inspiration on a piece that you would like to try. Make sure you tag me on Instagram so I can see what you did. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can be notified the next time I upload a video.